Hello everyone and welcome back to .NET Core Central. Today I'm going to discuss about pattern matching. So the three things I intend to cover in this video is number one, what is pattern matching? Number two, what are the pattern matching features in C Sharp 7 along with the example? And number three, what is the pattern matching features in C Sharp 8 along with the examples? So first thing what is pattern matching pattern matching is essentially when we match a property or a member of an object with the sequence to have a partial or a full match that's essentially what pattern matching is now pattern matching was first introduced in c sharp 7 whereas functional programming like f sharp and scala have pattern matching from day one in the languages in c sharp it was introduced in c sharp 7 and there have been a lot of improvement in C Sharp 8. So let's start with one by one. So I have a project which I created. It's a console application and it has base class called instrument and then couple of class derived from the base class. One is talk, one is bond. And what we are going to do is we have a function which is get volatility. It's going to find out the vol volatility based on instrument. So in a previous scenario, pre C Sharp 7, we can do things like if instrument is stock then return volatility as high If it is bond, then return as low, and for everything else, return unknown. So this one works fine uh, pre C sharp seven. In C sharp seven, what we can do is we can introduce, we can do this, and then we can call upon a property or function on the member variable. So let's say if this one had a property then we can do and we can keep rest of the thing as is but this is the feature which was introduced in C sharp 7. The second thing which was introduced in C sharp 7 is when along with switch statement. So we can use, sorry I had to, so we can use when with switch statement but for that I'm going to change the implementation a little bit here. So instead of this one I'm going to create two new classes but both of these classes will now derive from stock. Okay, so we created these two class. So now we can change this statement from if to a switch case. And
So the same thing could be done with switch but now inside of switch apart from matching on a particular object we can even go further and drill down and do some complex logic here. So this is something which was introduced in C Sharp 7. So there are a couple of things which was introduced. One thing is using is inside of a if statement and declare a variable to it and then using those property. And the second one in a switch statement we can use when and do more comparison or more pattern match on the object. Now with C Sharp 8 there are four things that is introduced. One is the enhanced switch statement which we are going to show right now. The second one is property pattern match and I spoke about briefly in one of my previous video. The third one is tuple pattern match and the fourth one is positional pattern match and we'll go through one by one. So improvement is in switch statement is really really helpful. So the same function can be completely changed with the new enhanced switch statement and you can see how concise the code becomes. And you can see the code has become really, really concise with the new syntax. So this is the first of the change. The second thing we are going to discuss about is property pattern match. So essentially matching on a particular property. So let's say for the same volatility, I mean, this is obviously not a very sophisticated example, but just to show the implementation of pattern match, let's say for the volatility, we instead of returning string, we are returning an int. And what we want to do is we want to do a check on a property. And let's say this is now stock. So what we can do is we can do we can keep rest of the code as is and we can for the fast check we can just say okay if the volatility property is high return one if it is emerging market irrespective of volatility just return two or return zero or we can change it here this implementation also and we can say well if volatility is very high return to and so on and so forth so you can see you know how we can use property pattern match i feel this is like a very powerful feature because the code is really concise we don't have to do object notation to figure out the property we can just give a property name and the value we expect and based on that we can return a pattern match the third one is the pattern match on a tuple. So, you know, let's say this function takes, instead of get volatility, let's figure out another example. So let's say we have a function called authorize. And it takes, let's say, three parameter. takes an API key, an odd token, and a boolean if the odd token is valid or not, right? 
So now what we can do is we can have a pattern match on this tree. So we can say So here we are saying if the auth token is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and any value for, uh, sorry, API key is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and any value for auth token in, is token valid, I'm just going to return a true. By the way, this is a horrible authorization mechanism, but you know, for this example, this is pretty easy to understand. So the next thing is, Next situation is the API key can be anything, the auth token can be anything, but the is token valid, if that is true, I'm going to return a true. And the third case, I'm saying that anything for API key, anything for auth token, but the auth token validity, if that is false, then return false. And for everything else, just straight return false. So that's another way. And here, as you can see, we're using a tuple. So we can use any combination of values to do a pattern match. And this one is also very, very powerful. It can be used in a lot of scenarios. I can see how useful this can be. The last thing which is introduced is positional pattern match. It's essentially a combination of tuple and a var keyword. So the way it works is in C sharp seven, there was a concept introduced called deconstruct. And this is also, deconstruct is also another feature which was initially available in uh, functional programming languages, but introduced in C sharp in C sharp seven. So with deconstruct, what happens is we can deconstruct an object and return its property through a tuple. So if an object or a class has two properties, we can use a method deconstruct and return both the properties and they are returned as tuple. And then in the pattern match, we can use the same object, but instead of using like property match or anything, we can just get the tuple and use that to, you know, do some validation. So let's say for the same example instrument, Let's say it has, let's again simplify this. Let's, let's say this is or, or let's just keep stock, just one. And here we go and we say And let's say we have a function called should buy, which will decide if we should buy this or not based on the price. And it is taking the stock as the input parameter. Now in this case, what we'll do is we want to see, you know, if the stock price is like, let's say here. So if the stock price is less than the max price, then we're going to buy, else we are not going to buy. That's probably a logic, like it's very simple logic, but you know, this is what we are going to do. Now in this case, if we want to use positional positional pattern match. First, we have to create a deconstructor here and uh, we can have a constructor as well. So,
So we are constructing the object and then we will have a deconstruct. So here basically we are doing exact opposite of what we did for construction. We're just deconstructing the same object into a tuple. Now we go back to the implementation of should buy and this is where we are going to use the positional pattern match. So for that what we are going to do is similar stuff. So now we are deconstructing the stock object. So here we're basically saying if price is less than max price then return true which means we should buy. If it's more than max price then just return false. We're not going to buy and for anything else just return false. So this is how we can use conditional pattern matching. I can see along with deconstruct this is really useful. I can see there are a lot of cases we can use this. These are the main four features which were released with C Sharp 8. If you want to know more details about this feature, you can go to my website in my blog and I have written pretty detailed article on all this feature. Once again, thank you so much for stopping by and watching this video. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. And if you have not subscribed to my channel already, please subscribe and provide me any comment in terms of what I can do to make this channel better and more useful and helpful for you. Thanks so much.